community is uh, Mark. The person that just immediately said, uh, see, see you by me. Mark served as a rifleman, radio tele telephone operator, and company clerk with the 1st Cavalry Division in Vietnam in 1971. The uncertainty which allowed him to go to war did not survive his first year, his year in Vietnam, and has motivated him to speak out against the war of militarism ever since. He's an active member of Veterans for Peace and veteran, Vietnam Veterans Against the War. Since 2010, he has served as a veterans advocate at Coffee, at Coffee Strong, assisting veterans of all wars and obtaining benefits earned during support of services. So with that, really. Thank you, Larry. Thank all of you for coming here today. Uh, we're here today to acknowledge the power and legitimacy of protest, uh, remembering the history of the uh, opposition to the war in Vietnam. And we're not doing this today for any, for any nostalgic reason. We're actually doing it because the same lies, the same deceptions, and the same delusions that took us to Vietnam are still uh, affecting our policy. And uh, these lessons that we supposedly learned in Vietnam have been largely ignored, if not completely dismissed. And if you need any evidence of that, look at the train wrecks that we had experienced in Iraq, in Iraq, in Afghanistan, and other places in the world. We still think that American power is all powerful, and we're always welcome. So this, what we want to do today is talk a little bit about how you can resist, how we can challenge that assumption. We organized this event. It's part of a national, uh, a, na a national campaign launched by the Vet Veterans for Peace. Uh, it's called Full Disclosure. And it's tied in with the official commemoration of the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War. Uh, this is organized by the US government. It's a $65 million uh, publicity campaign and largely sanitizes the war. It whitewashes much of the history that m many of us know to present it as a noble cause. And this is something that's been going on since about 1980, uh, trying to recast the war to say it was noble, it was right, we should essentially do more of it, or continue to do it. Uh, after Vietnam, everybody was kind of, kind of edgy about intervening in other countries. And I think in 1991, George Bush the first said, by God, we have kicked the Vietnam syndrome. And the whole idea is that we still want to be able to go to war. And we're coming here today saying there is an alternative. Uh, and one of the other parts of the uh, anniversary is it's presented as a thank you to the troops. Uh, Vietnam veterans apparently you know, were not thanked when we came back. Uh, so this idea is, yes, we finally get our thanks 40 years later, which is kind of after the fact. The thank you for your service is also a way of uh, ignoring the fact that there are policies that lead to war. You say, thank you for your service. You don't have to think about why we're going to war or what we're doing. And also, the uh, official commemoration largely ignores any of the opposition to the war. You know, many Americans, in fact, far more Americans objected to the war than actually served in the war. And none of that is presented in the official commemoration. So 50 years ago in 1965, uh, first teach-ins were held. Uh, to, basically, the idea was to educate America. At that time, people thought it might be, America didn't, might not know what, what was really happening. That was kind of naive on, on their part. But the idea was to present information so we could understand. So today's event, this teach-in, is a continuation of that tradition. So I mentioned this, we have the official commemoration of the uh, 50th anniversary. It started in 1960, or excuse me, 2012, and goes through 2025. Of course, if you think 50 years from uh, 1962, where does it, or from 2012, that puts us at 1962. And if you look what was happening in Vietnam, uh, you know, we had, in that, that year, we had 1,400 advisors to begin with. By the end of the year, we had over 10,000. 53 Americans were killed in Vietnam during 1962. That's double all the number of Americans who've been killed all years before. That's also the year the United States began spraying Agent Orange. So by 1962, which we are observing as the 50th anniversary, we were heavily invested in this war. So if you really want to look at the beginnings of the war, you have to go back uh, quite some time. In fact, if you really want to start thinking about it, you go all the way back to 1919 when a group of expatriate Vietnamese in Paris approached Woodrow Wilson at the Paris Peace Conference following World War I and asked him to include uh, the colonial possessions of the European powers in the peace settlement. And that was ignored. One of the uh, members of that group that made the petition was the man who later became Ho Chi Minh. Fast forward to World War II, we cooperated with Ho Chi Minh and the Viet Minh uh, in operations against the Japanese. Uh, they helped rescue our pilots. Our, uh, 
Secret Service officers who were working with him had great respect for both Ho Chi Minh and his movement. So when, after the war, when Ho Chi Minh uh, declared the Democratic Republic of Vietnam in, in 1945, he quoted extensively from our Declaration of Independence. And given that he thought maybe America would support it, he was wrong. Within two months of that declaration, American troop ships were ferrying French troops back into Vietnam. And also, it was the first protest against Vietnam, against that action. The crews of those ships uh, got together and drafted a, drafted a petition uh, challenging, you know, objecting to the use of American troops to uh, fight against indigenous Vietnamese nationalist movements. And what we were doing is we were supporting our European ally, France, trying to consolidate against, consolidate against the Soviet Union and world communism. So after that, even though we'd, we'd sent the, helped the French come back, Ho Chi Minh did not give up on the United States. And in February of 1946, he wrote to President Truman asking for support. He said, our goal was full independence and full cooperation with the United States. We will do our best to make this independence and cooperation profitable to the whole world. Like, like the previous petition, it was ignored. By the end of the year, the French Indochina War had broken out. And from 1940, from, from then on, um, to 1954, we strongly supported the French and a corrupt South Vietnamese government against, uh, against uh, Ho Chi Minh and the Viet Minh. Uh, our first military advisors arrived in 1950. And by 1954, we had financed some of the 80% of the French war effort. With all of that, it still was not enough. Uh, the French surrendered at Dien Bien Phu in 1954, which led to the Geneva Peace Conference, which the, developed the Geneva Accords, where, which Vietnam was to be divided at the 17th parallel until elections could be held in 1956 to reunify the country. The United States and, South Viet and the South Vietnamese government did not sign this treaty, but agreed to abide by it. And that lasted for about a year. And the president of South Vietnam, Ngo Dinh Diem, uh, object, objected to having the elections because he knew he would lose. And the United States stood by him. So we wrapped up our military uh, effort, uh, creating the Military Assistance Advisory Group in 1956. And from 1956 to uh, 1962, a guerrilla insurgency arose. And the South Vietnamese government brutally repressed that. So we had a lot of conflict going on. And despite all the American aid, uh, the insurgency was winning, which is why 1962 might be considered a pivotal year, because we finally decided we needed to do more. So we sent in more advisors. It didn't really help. Uh, in 1963, there was unrest, Buddhist unrest. Jem uh, was overthrown by a military coup and assassinated. The following year, uh, the United States was supposedly attacked in the Gulf of Tonkin by um, Vietnamese warships. And we said it was unprovoked, but in fact, we had been running military operations up and down the North Vietnamese coast uh, for years. That same, same year, Lyndon Johnson won re-election as a peace candidate. He ran against Barry Goldwater, who was militantly pro-war. In the following year, the United States began what was called, known as Operation Rolling Thunder, Thunder it's an incessant bombing campaign of uh, North Vietnam that lasted unabated until 1980, excuse me, 1968. And also in 1965, we introduced the first American combat troops to Vietnam. Um, and that was the first, in, uh, by the end of that year, we had 184,000 uh, troops in Vietnam. And that was the first installment of what ultimately exceeded 500,000 troops. So I won't go into the rest of the world. Some of that, most of that history is known. Uh, you know, we bombed, strafed, did all sorts of things. My unit personally did all sorts of things, like uh, chopped, you know, chopped down jungles, burned jungles littered, uh, and far worse. And but just looking at the macro, uh, during Vietnam, we dropped 8 million tons of ordnance on Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia. And that is roughly four times the amount of tonnage dropped on all, all during World War II. It's also been, uh, one article I looked at said that it's the equivalent of 100 uh, of the Hiroshima and Nagasaki atomic bombs. So it was a massive amount of firepower. We also killed civilians indiscriminately. Uh, you've all heard of the, Nick, of the 
the Mille Lion Massacre, but if you read uh, Nick Curse's book, Kill Everything That Moves, you will know that Mille Lion was not an aberration. It was actually a matter of fact. One soldier described it as like a, one Mille Lion a month. So uh, the estimates of the uh, civilian dead range from uh, two to four million. We also sprayed 19 million gallons of herbicide, uh, including Agent Orange throughout Vietnam, poisoning the environment. And all of this has left a, a, a lasting legacy of war. Uh, massive amounts of unexploded ordnance remain in Vietnam and Laos, kill, killing uh, civilians there. Agent Orange continues to poison many areas of Vietnam and produces severe birth defects into successive generations. American veterans and their children also suffer from the effects of Agent Orange. And of course, we're still paying the cost of the Vietnam War and the health care and the benefits and compensation for our veterans. And for World War II, the highest year for compensation of World War II veterans was 1995. So we will be paying for this for a long time. And thinking as, we, as you hear, listen to the panels, we think about the lies that we were told. We were told we were attacked. In fact, Vietnam didn't attack us. We were told that it was a national, essential to our national interest. We lost. And what happened? Nothing. So that's, that, that's my overview of, of the whole thing.